When the bridegroom comes, we your robes be white. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? We your soul be ready for the mansion's bright. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul blessing blood. Psalm 71 verse 7 David said I am a wonder to many thou art my strong refuge I am a wonder to many a wonder is what you cannot describe but yet cannot deny a positive outburst that cannot be described but yet cannot be denied you will pray to the Lord make me a wonder to many and what God does is that when he makes you a wonder to many, he also gives you security to, to remain a wonder. That is why it says, thou art my strong refuge. I'm a wonder, thou art my refuge. Thou art my strength, thou art my fortress. So when God makes you a wonder, he knows there will be envy. There will be jealousy. There will be strife. There will be wranglings. So what he does by, after making you a wonder is also to give you a fortification. A defense. It keeps you. It preserves you. It sustains you. The hand that lifts can keep. So God makes you a wonder and also keeps you, fortifies you. So we we'll pray today by the Spirit of God. Make me a wonder to many. Make me a wonder. That your life will begin to accelerate and go up and go high and go up and go high. Are you following me? Your life begins to accelerate. A wonder is one that, one that cannot be described. People don't understand. Your dimensions are not understandable. That is why I always tell us to say to our enemies not to study us because they will not graduate. Say to your neighbor, don't study me because you will not graduate. You, you are not a cause that can be understood. You are not a cause that can be understood. Your life is... is is waved and moved by the spirit of God. So we're going to pray, Lord, make me a wonder to many. A wonder to many. Are you ready? Say, my father, my father. In the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. In the name of Jesus. As I pray today. Make me a wonder to many. Open your mouth and turn into prayer. Kalido Saga Kayaga Saga Iyaga daga daga raga daga raga daga raga daga raga daga raga daga raga kwa 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 tika bas Yeah. 
Jesus name there is an anointing that I'm feeling I was here this morning it's a strong anointing of God the power of the Holy Spirit for signs wonders and miracles is very strong here today and it's ready anytime God comes like that in his power is for hungry and ready individuals testy testy hungry lift your hands toward heaven hear my cry O Lord attend unto my prayer From the ends of the earth Will I cry unto thee And when my heart is overwhelmed Please lead me to the rock That is higher than that is higher than I. The glory of God is in this place. Oh, yeah, my cry. Turn to my From the ends of the earth will I cry. And when my heart is overwhelmed Please lead me Lead me to the rock That is higher than now Jesus Holy Spirit And come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come, in your fullness and power. Come, in your own space. Shall we? I say, Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. And come, in me a fullness and power. And come in your own gentle way. And come in your strength and thy power. And come in your own. Come in your strength. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia, sing alleluia to the Lord. Sing alleluia, sing.
we magnify your name and we say how much we love you we bless you and we say how much we love you we magnify your name and we say how much we love you we glorify your name lord we say how much we love you magnify your name lord we say how much we love you just pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. We bless your name. Then we say, much we care. And we say, much we love you. We exalt you, Lord. And we say, Shanda Saka, I bless your holy name, and I say how much I love you. We give you glory. I bless your holy name, and we say how much we love you. Thank you, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. My desire is to see the nations worship ever try standing of you. Nations rise, sing hallelujah. I want my life to be a channel to my world. To my world. Let people see the you in me, not, not just me. Let people oh, yeah. hear the you in me, not just me. Let people come to, to see seek your, your face as you live your life through me. Let people see the you in me, not just me. Let people see the you in me, not just me. Let people see the you in me, not just me. Let people come to see the office as you live your life to me. Let people see the you in me, not just me. Just lift your hands, everybody. Father, we honor you. We bless your name. We bless you on the highest place. For you are the great high priest. We bless you. Father, in Jesus' powerful name, we worship. Amen. Hallelujah. As the message is going on, operations will be taking place. There are people, doctors have told that they have to correct some things in their body. But as this message is going on. Some of you are going to feel uncomfortable. God is oh, Lord, God is going to be correcting 
whatever needs adjustment correction in your body Jesus will attend to it in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah first Kings chapter 2 Kustanana Shobalega Verse 36, 37, 38. First Kings chapter 2, 36 to 38. First Kings 2, 36 to 38. And the king, is it like that in your Bible? Sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build thee an house. Where? In Jerusalem and dwell there. Go not forth thence any whither. For it shall be that on the day that thou goest out and passest over the brook Kidron, thou shalt know for certain that thou shalt surely die. Thy blood shall be upon thy own head. And she may have said unto the king, The saying is good. As my Lord the King had said, so will thy servant do. And she met dwelt in Jerusalem many days, breaking limits. I'm sharing on that briefly. I just sense the Holy Spirit want to do something. Breaking limits. Breaking limits. When I read that portion of the Bible, when I read it initially, I was almost excited until I read it again. Solomon called for Shimei and said to Shimei, come. Solomon was sitting in the city capital, which was Jerusalem, and said, stay here in Jerusalem, build a house. That sounds like breakthrough. Building the house sounds like breakthrough. Come, build the house. It sounds like good news. He said, but stay there. Don't leave that axis. The day you leave, you die. Build the house. There are many of us building the house to us is a breakthrough which in actual sense it is it's not easy to build a house especially these days eh? when things are very cheap things are so cheap build a house but dwell there in other words be a local champion. Don't go beyond this level. Celebrate the little that you have. But there is a limit. Celebrate what has come to your hand. But there is a limit. That explains why some of us today, there are levels that we are experiencing right now. You don't beg to eat. You can feed yourself. You can clothe yourself. But something tells you that you are restricted. You don't beg to eat. It's not until you are a beggar that you claim you are suffering. You don't need to be a beggar to suffer. If there are potentials inside you that are dying, you are suffering. If there are dreams inside you that are dying, you are suffering. Even if you have built a house, even if you have bought a car, if there is something inside of you that is dying, you have a dream that is dying, you have a potential that is dying, you have an idea that is dying, it is dying inside. Satan has placed a limit on your life and that is one thing God wants to do for us in this service today by the power that created the heavens and created the earth every barricade every limit placed on your life today you will cross that limit I said you will cross that limit God wants you to continually Most people, 
who come around, oh, daddy, I bought a car. I said, okay, let's go dedicate the car. After dedicating the car, I ask them a question. What next? Because this is not the final. Anything you have done is no more an achievement. Anything you have done is no more an achievement. It's no more a potential. A potential is what, you have, what is in you that you have not brought out. You bought a car? What next? You've got a first degree? What next? Second degree? What next? Because God wants you to increase. Exodus 1 verse 7. God wants you to increase. He says people increase. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 3 said they increase mightily. Mightily. Psalm 71 21. Thou shalt comfort me on every side. Thou shalt increase my greatness. God wants you to increase. Job 8 verse 7. Though thy beginning was small, thy latter end shall greatly, should greatly increase. God wants you to increase. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 8. They shall increase as they have increased. I am, I am irritated when I see people with potentials not tapped. People with passion not exhibited. People with graces not developed. God wants you to increase. Look at a man like Saul. He was a persecutor. Look at Saul. Hold on. Look at Saul who became Paul in the Bible. Even those that followed Jesus, they saw Jesus literally, never got the kind of achievement he got. As soon as he got saved, in Acts chapter 9 verse 22, the Bible says he increased more and more. He got saved and started pursuing, breaking the limits. Genesis 26, 13. He said the man was great. The man went forward and he grew until he became very great. I don't understand why people in several professions of the world who are believers are not putting pressure on their mind. Pressure on their mind, pressure on ideas to see how they can bring a turnaround. I don't understand it. Am I communicating now? You need to work to break limits. It's an error for you to end up a failure. It's an error for you to end up on the same spot. It's an error for you to em end up restricted. What does it mean to, to, to be limited? Limit is being truncated, being stagnated, being restricted, being prevented. When a person is truncated, stagnated, restricted, prevented, that's a limit. Another word for limit is insufficiency, lean, slender. Another word for limit is restriction, inadequate, paltry, sketchy, pitchy, minimal, minimal. Insubstantial, meager, narrow, finite. The limit is micro. The limit is, is, is the inability to go beyond the level. The limit. The limit is to experience a, 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 a scanty lifestyle. The limit is to be barricaded and quarantined. That's a popular English in this. Everybody, even the village woman knows what it means to be quarantined. Am I communicating here? To be limited. And I ask, when I see people with potentials, grace. Listen to this. Listen to this. I will show you a few things from that scripture. That man that they were talking about. He had servants. Originally, he was blessed. But, he was limited. So, house and a building for him was not an achievement. He was blessed. But, restricted. There are people. Hear what he said. He said, the day you go out, you shall surely die. Does that explain what is happening in many families? That the day somebody wants to go above what others have achieved before, they pluck him out. The day somebody wants to marry legally, say this family, nobody marries legally. Let me break the yoke. They pluck her out. They pluck him out. The days I've seen several men who try to break the limit of building a house in the village. From America, they bring them back, sometimes mad, sometimes dead. Somebody's trying to break the limit of becoming something in life. 
something happens to that person and the enemy limits such a one I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus if you're in this meeting or hearing the sound of my voice that demonic circle is broken limit what God has put inside of you you have not even tapped it there's so much resource inside of you. There's so much deposit inside of you. I was talking to mommy this morning and I said to mama, I said, I can't understand why a singer, an artist will allow one month pass without a song. Without getting a song from the Holy Ghost. And you are an artist. You are known as an artist. You have to put pressure on your spirit. Do you know what it means as a preacher to get one revelation from the Bible? You put pressure on your spirit man to get the revelation from the Bible. And your pastor will stand there on a Sunday, 20 revelations, 50 revelations. Do you know what it means to get one? This is my life. You put pressure, pressure. And I'll see people wake up, go to bed, and there is nothing they are bringing out. You are a fashion designer, you are a hairstylist, and you are not improving on becoming that person that will have what nobody has. There's, there are designs you know that nobody knows. Am I talking to somebody here? There's a man in Benin. The man started selling bread in bits. Every, people queue to buy his bread. People queue to buy his bread. And he became a multimillionaire. And I mean, I personally, growing up in Benin, we love that bread. They call it the Plymouth bread. And all of us, my father would travel then to Benin. My father would buy that bread. As he's coming, we are grabbing it from him. The Plymouth bread. Those people who are from Benin know what I'm talking about. That bread was outstanding. Until we found out there was something he put in that bread that people didn't know. That made that bread like butter. That when you draw it, it's like rubber. You, you mold it, it's like fufu. You can put it in your pocket. Damn it, am I talking to somebody here? Even if you don't have butter, you just take Plymouth bread. And he had something that nobody had. And one time they interviewed him and asked him, what is the secret? He said, the secret is a secret. What is the secret, sir? The secret is a secret. He said, if I tell you the secret, is no more a secret. The secret is old now. He's almost running 80 or over 80. Or over, he's my friend. Almost running over 80, but he's still in business because there's something he knows that has crossed several decades. Am I talking to somebody? You can't be with the generality and affect your generation. You can't be with the generality and affect your generation there must be something you know that nobody knows there must be an idea you have that nobody has there must be an intimacy that is singer why people are depending on several singers to coin songs you are depending on the holy ghost when the holy ghost gives you a song it will be a song of revival it will be revival when he comes from the womb of the Holy Ghost, you spend time waiting on God, he can come as a dream, he can come as an illumination, he can come as an inspiration. When is the Holy Ghost? That is what will, will affect your world. There is so much inside of you. Shema was a great man. But listen to this, and it's going to bless you. Why did Solomon tell him that? What led to that? <laughs> In 2 Samuel 16. It was the period of Absalom from chapter 15. Absalom was against his father. Shimei was one of those. One day David was walking through a city. And was walking through a city. In 2 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 5. and I'll take verse 5 and verse 12. He was walking through a city called Bahurim. When he was walking through that city with some mighty men. Shimei ran out. He said, when King David came to Bahurim and behold, then came out a man of the family of Saul, of the family of Saul, of the family of Saul. The Bible was very specific that this man's problem was in his family. Family of Saul. When you see script things like that, you understand where the man's problem comes from. Family problem. Whose name was Shimei, the son of Gerah? He came forth and cursed him. He just came out and barricaded and double crossed David, laid in wait for him and began to curse him. He was cursing him, cursing him. The servants of David were looking at this man. They were with spear. They were with sword. Ha. He was cursing them. And you see when somebody comes out alone, you are wondering who is behind him. Armed men. We are cursing him. Cursing him. Not only cursing him, he began to say, that's why God has taken your kingdom from you and given to your son. 
It was a period David was running from his own son. David was not running from Absalom because Absalom was so powerful. David was running because he didn't want to shed the blood of his own child. And the child wanted to kill him. So as a father, he was just avoiding the child. Not because David ran from battle. David never ran from anybody except his son. But how will his hand kill his own son? And when Shimei began to insult David, the servants of David said, let's take this man out. Let's cut off his head. Let's kill him. David said, leave him alone. If the Lord has permitted him to insult me, so be it. If he said, David said something that broke my heart. He said, if my own son is planning to kill me, why will I be bothered when a stranger is insulting me? I have bigger problems. If my own son is planning to take my life, why will I be bothered when a stranger he said, please, let him insult me. Maybe, I like this, maybe God will look on my affliction because of his insult and fight for me. Let me say this, I've told people over time. Sometimes when you conspire against people, when you gang up against them, you rise up against them, you plan against them. Listen to this very well. Even if they were guilty, your conspiracy has made them innocent before God. You didn't get what I said. Even if they were originally guilty, the fact because God hates conspiracy. Do you know why God hates conspiracy? Anywhere God sees people gather against people, God is angry. You know why? It reminds him of what Satan did. It reminds him of what Satan did. How the devil gathered. I asked myself a question. Angels made by God, God made them. Satan is stupid. God made angels just the way he made Satan. Yet Satan convinced angels to follow him. What did he tell them? That's what I don't understand. What did he tell them? You are a member. I am a member. The same church. What can you tell me? That I will believe and make me leave church. You are a member. I mean, what will you tell me? That will now convince me. And I'll believe you. I keep asking, what did Satan tell them? That convinced them. And there was a re rebellion. What? Where did Shimei curse David? Listen to this. They got to a spot called Bahurim. That was when Shimei caused David. You know, let me tell you what David did. When Shimei came later and begged David, David said, it's okay. I forgive you. I will not hold it against you. When Solomon became king, <laughs> David was a bad guy. <laughs> he said, Shimei, no, no, I won't kill you. I forgive you. Go. When Solomon became king, David called Solomon and said, come. There was a man when Absalom wanted to kill me, I was in pain. He came, I was mocking me with my pain. I promised him that my hand will not kill him. Kill him. In old age. First Kings chapter 2, I think verse 8. He said, kill him. I, I promised him that my hand, I didn't say it will not die, I just said it's not my hand. So if it's not my hand, it can be your hand. He said, behold, thou hast with thee, Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamin of Bahurim, which cost me with a grievous cost. The day when I went to Mahanim. See, eh? people can talk, oh, but there are some talk when they pass talk. No matter how strong and confident... How many people? People have been cursing David. There are things people will say against you. Don't you say I don't care. But there are some you will hear. Hey, hey. There are things people can do to you, but there are some that they do. Hey, I look at David. This was the same David that Saul wanted to kill. He wasn't bothered. This was the same David that people rose up against. The Philistine rose up against. He wasn't bothered. What was so, so devastating about what Shimei did? Shimei was insulting David in the days of David's pain. 
David say, ah, I had injury. This man added salt to my injury. Oh, you don't get what I'm talking about. Not all pepper is pepper. There's a tarudu. There's Cameroon pepper. Hey. <laughs> Tatache is there. Eh? Hey. She does Ghanaian pepper. Shatawewe. When you there, there are pepper you taste. If you take hours for you to be extinguished from the pain. Naturally, I don't eat pepper. Naturally. I don't eat pepper and I don't like what they fry. Because I believe when you fry something, you have taken away the, the substance. Fry meat. Why are you frying the meat? What did they do? You kill the meat. Is that not enough? You now boil the meat. You now fry it. What is that? I don't like it. It takes away the reality. Boil it is okay. Boil the fish. Boil the meat. If you, once, you, they know in my, once you fry it, I won't eat it. I will not eat it at all. Once, don't fry it. I went to a program one time where the pastors who have had the anointing to fry. I was fasting throughout. She will fry everything. The only thing she didn't fry was greeting. 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 <laughs> fry, 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 fry. Fry yam, fry egg, fry this, fry. Everyone who, is, who understands um, body mechanism and understands dieting will tell you that it is not right. Some of you are looking at me somehow. Because you are, are you addicted to frying? <laughs> you are looking at me. <laughs> sweet in the mouth. Yeah, not everything sweet in the mouth is healthy to the body. Okay. okay. Maybe I touched a nerve. I touched a sensitive spot. Some people who like frying are looking at me. Papa, leave that side. I, I like to fry. Keep frying now. <laughs> Am I communicating? I don't naturally I don't I don't like it I don't there was a program I went to and I was hungry and they brought the food I just blessed it I put one I put two I put three I felt something it wasn't anointing I felt something I'm like, I put it in my mouth I gargled it I carried brush I brushed no way even on the altar as I was praying, I would talk. Ah, ah, ah. And I'm sure some people were like, Yes, Jesus. It was the anointing, Pepe. I would turn. So there are curses. And so he said to Solomon, bring them verse 8 of 1 Kings chapter 2. He said, When he cursed me to a grievous curse when I went to Mahanim, but he came down to meet me. <laughs> David was saying this in old age. He came down to meet me, and I swear to him by the Lord, <laughs> saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. Verse 9. Now, therefore, hold him not guiltless, for thou art a wise man. Thou knowest what thou ought to do unto him. <laughs> but his whole head bring down to the grave with blood. Don't let him die naturally. Make sure you are the one that took him out. And Solomon said, okay, I will implicate him so he will kill himself. Since you escape blood, me, I will escape blood. <laughs> Solomon, since you escape blood, me too, I escape. But I will set him up so he will kill himself. He said, so he called him and said, come, build the house. He knows the man's leg does not stay one place. <laughs> build the house, stay there can I say this to you limitation is as good as death I will kill him, I will limit him in other words, I will kill him slowly anytime you start experiencing limitation it is a slow motion to death anytime oh calabra gadashata where did he curse? David, I want to pray. I want to pray. 
It cost him in a place called Bahurim. Bahurim means the town of young people. The town of youth. Many youth today are destroying their future, putting a limitation on their future by what they are doing today. The town of young people. There are many youths who have ruined themselves. They feel that life is just do what you want. I'm a young person. Why can't I do what I want? I'm a young person. Why can't I have all the fun I want to have? I'm a young person. Why can't I live the kind of life I want to live? Okay. The things that your eyes see, no problem. Go and get them. The things that your body wants, no problem. Go and get them. I like what, what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 11 verse 9. He said, oh, youth, the thing you want, get them. The thing your eyes see, get them. But now that for all these things... God shall bring you to judgment. He said, rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. Let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Walk in the ways of thy heart and in the sight of thy eyes. But know thou that for all these things, you like to do what is in your heart. Nobody can advise you. You like to go after what you see. Nobody can convince you. Whatever you want, you get it by all means. No problem. He said, but know thou that in all this, God shall bring thee to judgment. They die in their youth because of sin. Job 36 and verse 14. They die in their youth. They are disconnected in their youth. That's what Job said. Because they are unclean. They die in their youth. And their life is unclean. They die. Psalm 119 verse 9. Where we shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed unto thy world. They die in their youth. They die in their youth. I remember what Job said. Job said, I remember the days of my youth. I remember when I was a young man, Job 29 and verse 4, when the secret of God was with me. What was Job saying? As a youth, I spent my time connecting myself to God. David was now a father. David was now a husband. And David was missing his youthful days. As a husband, as a father. He said, I remember, Job, Job, brother, I remember when the secret of God was with me. When the spirit of God was with me. Bring up verse 5. When the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. When the Almighty was yet with me. When my children were about me. I remember I spent my youthful days with God. God is looking for a generation of young people that will be crazy for him. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1. Remember now that creator in the days of thy youth. When the evil days come not not the yours turn nigh when you will say I have no pleasure you are suffering suffer as a youth you are going through hardship go through it as a youth you can't feed go through it as a youth Lamentations 3.27 he says good thy man bear the yoke in his youth bear the yoke in his youth Lamentations 3.27 it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Bring out that translation. That he bear the yoke in his youth. It is good. That a man goes through. It is best to learn this patience in our youth. Patience in our youth. It's a good, oh my God, I like this. It's a good thing when you are going through, when you are young, to stick it out through the hard times. No food. Go through it instead of becoming a Yahoo boy. No money in your pocket. Go through it instead of becoming a prostitute. There is nothing in your hand. Go through it instead of becoming an armed robber. Go through it. He said it is good that a man should bear, that he should bear the yoke of godly discipline in his youth. Go through it in your youth. Go through it. Don't understand the language others understand. It is the best time. It was in his youth. She made did what affected him in old age. In his days of, you know, one of the biggest deception of the youth, one of the biggest deception of the youth is that they think there is still more time. They think that they have time. I say, I'm still young. They think there is so much time. You don't really have time. If Jesus starts to come in the next 10 years, you are no more a girl, you are a woman. If Jesus starts to come in the next seven, eight years, you are not a girl, you are a woman. You must learn how to develop things now. Develop yourself. Am I talking to somebody here? Develop yourself. I tell my biological children, don't just go to school, learn something. Learn something, learn sewing, learn baking, learn something. Learn computer, learn something. Don't depend on just one stream of income. Be loaded. Let your husband see you as a priceless possession. That there is nothing you don't know. You can cook. You can bake. You can fix hair. You can... Let him see you as that person. Am I talking to somebody here? 
that can do anything, anything. When it comes to cooking, you are there. Come to baking, you are there. Come to sewing, you are there. Say, ah, ah. You learned everything. Say, I learned how to do everything. Not to sit down morning to night, you are pressing phone and ending up useless. Not to sit down morning to night, all you are doing is telling people to give you data because you want to browse and look for what is not looking for you. Not, 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 not that you spend your whole life. Your youth is going. Your life is wasting. Am I communicating here? There are some youth that don't know how to do anything. Very lazy. You can't cook. You can't sweep. You can't clean. There's nothing you know how to do. Nothing. People have been making you up, making you up. Can't you sit down and learn it? Can't you learn it yourself so you know how to do it? Can't you learn how to bake? Can't you learn how to cook? Can't you learn how to sew? Can't you learn? Wasted youth. There's some young men looking at me that there's nothing they know how to do. There's nothing they have learned. Nothing. People wear clothes. What is wrong in you being a dry cleaner? What is wrong in you being a dry cleaner? You've been, been a laundry man. Have you not seen male chef? Male chef. They enter and they cook well. You see them, male chef. They are cooking. Have you not seen? I think it's even a job for, for guys too. Guys doing laundry, wash, iron. You can't even iron your own clothes. You burn it. You can't even iron your clothes. You can't. There's nothing you know how to do. At this level of my life, when I travel abroad with mama, I iron her clothes. All of them. I say, well, what am I doing? Pack them here. Pack all of them. But it's, if I, I finish iron the clothes, I've saved $50. I've saved $100 from one irresponsible person that will not even bring the cloth when we need it. Settle down. I'll iron everything. Hang it. Keep it corporate. God, not teach you now to do. There are men that can't even boil water. I wish I was talking to somebody. Useless, don't be a useless person. First Timothy 4 12 says, Let no man despise thy youth. Let no one despise thy youth. Let no one despise thy youth. Let no one despise thy youth. When I see you going about looking for money, there is money everywhere, sir. There's money everywhere. There is walking. It's like you can't carry block. No, you carry block. You, no. You. The youngest chief. The youngest chief. In your 20s, you have already become the Oguefi of Akoko Edo. <laughs> See, me carry block. I've carried load on my head. Me. Yet I come from a wealthy family. I've carried load on this head. Your parents will not be with you all the time. I've carried load on this head. I've done any work. You know any work? Do you know any work? Any work? Any work? My father is sitting there and I will be surprised. He'll be shocked. I did any work in the market. Because you can't keep depending on your parents for money. Any work? Any work? We borrow! You know my dad's going to be like, What? How? I also he doesn't understand <laughs> I did everything everything I remember there was a period of ladies bike I walk with bike in school I walk with bike carry people I just wanted they would give me money I still wanted to make my own I wanted to have my own money and there are people who do nothing you are a young girl look at your nails like Jezebel no I can't no I can't wash no, I can't wash. Am I talking to somebody here? And I'm talking to teenagers now. Don't copy from this current youth. They are not good role models. Huh? Some of them. Most of them. I'm 
so I sat down and I hear some of my children tell me, I can do this, I can learn this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. I say, come and take money. We'll empower you. We'll empower you. I'm ready to empower anybody in this church that has a craft. Anybody. Even if you are 1,000 that can do something. You will do one. I will see it. I will give you money to empower you. Not they give you money on what? What, I, what they give you the money for? You go and buy phone. Because you are useless. You go and buy phone. It's a waste. Is iPhone your problem? Is iPhone your problem? You are in competition. Your friend has gotten iPhone 13. You must have iPhone 13. This got iPhone 12. You must have iPhone 12. With a zero bank account. Zero bank account. Not in the bank. If your phone, if the amount of your phone is more than what you have in the bank account, it already defines your destiny. It has defined your priority because your priority determines your prosperity. If what you, your, your phone, the amount for your phone is more than what is in your bank account, after this service, sell your phone. Buy a cheaper one. They don't give award for the best phone. They don't give award for the best phone. Nobody gives award for the best phone. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Sell your phone. Use that money, the money on top. Do a business. Start something. Are you following me? There are hometowns, sir. There are am I talking to you here today? There are villages and there are towns you still get a plot of land for 300,000. For 400,000. And you are carrying a 1 million naira foot. You are, you, are, you are making call with 3 plots of land. That's a land you are holding in your hand. Sell it. I'm giving you wisdom. Sell it. One of my children during the week said to me that they got something for you. I said, what is it? He said, I'm about to buy it. When I buy it, I'll tell you. I said, don't, don't surprise me. I don't like surprise because you end up surprising yourself. You can spend so much money and I don't like it. And I won't hide it from you. I'll tell you I don't like it. He said, okay. It's a wristwatch. I said, ah, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. I like watches. I said, wait, how much? And mention the amount. I said, is it, is it an estate? Are you buying an estate? He said, no, it's a wristwatch, sir. It is the 2022 wristwatch. The latest of the brand. When mentioned, it was several millions. I said, no problem. Will the wristwatch tell me the day Jesus is coming? <laughs> Will he tell me the time? He said, no, sir. I said, okay, if you must do anything, look for one of our churches there. Buy them a land. Build a church for them. I will say, no, 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 no. I said, uh, then what you are doing is eye service. Is high service. If it's me, I'm, you want to do it for I'm telling you, buy land. Imagine, I'll be wearing a beauty on my hand. There are some people that they will have to, if they come to rob them, it's their hand they will come for. Your hand or your life? So I, 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 am, I, am, I am talking to the youths of today. When I see the kind of life they live, our fathers did not live like that. Our fathers never lived like that. You must learn it now. Bear the yoke in your youth. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? The man was told, don't go beyond. So let's consider the things that trigger that attitude of restriction. Number one, hear what the Bible says. The Bible said this man did this years ago. In his past, David waited for him to old age. The man's foundation, number one, nothing sponsors limitation like foundation. Nothing empowers. Satan is a good record keeper. Satan 
is impeccable when it comes to keeping records. One day Moses looked at the tribe of Reuben. The tribe of Reuben was so useless. There was no priest. There was no prophet. There was no Levite. There was no scribe among the tribes of Reuben. And David Moses was wondering why was it like that. And the Bible says he decided to bring the book of the Chronicles. And he found out that in Genesis 49 verse 3, a curse, verse 3 and 4, a curse was placed on Reuben. And Moses said, now I understand why there is a limitation. In Deuteronomy 33 and verse 6, he said, let Reuben live and not die. What was the power fighting Reuben? It was the foundational power of his life. I look at a man like Moses, one of my favorite characters in the Bible is the man called Moses. I like Moses so much that God could speak of him. Moses was a man who had an outstanding walk with God. God. Moses' work with God was so outstanding, was so transgenerational that God will always come down to defend Moses verbatim. In Numbers 12 verse 3 the Bible says concerning Moses, he was the meekest man of the face of the earth. When somebody say Moses was aggressive and had anger issues, Moses never had anger issues because you cannot be meek and aggressive at the same time. Moses was a man of God. But how come when God told Moses to speak to the rock, Moses became angry and Moses struck the rock if you study your Bible where you discover that was a foundation in Genesis 49 verse 5 you will see when God placed a curse on Simeon and Levi he says Simeon and Levi you are habitations of cruelty my soul come not in their anger because why in Genesis 34 and verse 25 the Bible says Levi and Simeon they slid all the male in a particular family because someone raped their sister they didn't let it go they invited the man they said come you like my my sister said, I come and marry her. Come, bring your family, all the male, all the male, your cousins male, your nephew male, bring all of them. And when they brought them, the Bible says they waited, they gave them drink. When they were drunk and drunk and drunk, the Bible says, and they slew. It came to pass on the third day, when they were saw, he said, the two sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levin, Dinah's brother, Dinah was the sister that was molested, took each man his sword, came on the city boldly. They slew all the male. Every male in that city, they slew them. When David heard, of, when uh, Jacob heard about it, Jacob was grieved in his heart and said, why have you brought this to me? He placed a curse on them. He said, this thing you have done? He said, listen, my soul, come not in their anger. He said, they shall not be joined in Israel. They shall be scattered in Jacob. What was he saying initially? No matter how they labor, they will not get a portion from Israel. No matter the suffering, no matter what they go through, they will not get a portion. They will not get a place in Israel. He said, they, they, oh my soul, come not in the anger, not to the assembly. My honor, be thou not united. For in their anger, they slew a man. In their self-will, they dig down a wall. Verse 7. They dig down a wall. He said, cause be their anger, for it was fierce. He said, and their rot, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. In other words, in Israel, they will not have a portion. In Jacob, I will divide them. No matter their effort, who did he curse? Simeon, Levi. Go to Exodus chapter 1. The Bible speaks about a man called Moses in chapter 1 verse 2. He said, Exodus 1 and verse 2. Exodus 1 verse 2. Exodus 1 verse 2. Reuben, Simeon and Levi. Exodus 1 verse 2. Go on. Go further. Go further. Okay, go to Exodus 2 and verse 1 and 2. Exodus 2, 1 and 2. Exodus 2. There went a man out of the house of Levi and took a wife of the daughter of Levi. Verse 2. And the woman conceived and bare a son. Who was the son? Moses. Who was cursed? Who was cursed? Who was cursed? Levi. That he would not have a portion in Israel. So what happened to Moses? His father was from Levi. His mother was from Levi. There was a generational curse. No wonder when Moses was to enter the promised land, the anger that was caused in his grandfather came out inside him. And he smote the rock. He did not get a portion in Jacob. What does that mean? He did not enter the promised land. Not be, a man who walked with God, a man who saw God face to face, foundation still pursued him. Because Moses was too busy. Do you know the name Moses is not an Israelite name? 
It's an Egyptian name. It was Pharaoh's daughter that gave that name to Moses. Moses means I drew him from water. And as far as Pharaoh's daughter was concerned, because in those days, Pharaoh's daughter had no child. And she was the only child of her father. So they were looking for who will succeed her, who will become a king in the father's stead. So she went to the river to cry to the god of the river. She didn't go there to take her bath. There were swimming pools in the palace. She went to see the god of the river. Imagine in Exodus 7. That's how Pharaoh will go to the river in the morning. That was why God said to Moses, the first plague was in the water. God said to Moses, go and meet Pharaoh because he goes to the water. He depended on the water. That's why God turned the water to blood. When the Bible said the water became blood, it wasn't color that changed. It was something that died. It was something that died. The Bible said the fish died. What happened? He taught his daughter. When the daughter went to the river to cry to the God of the river, as she opened her eyes, she saw a child coming. Hey! In her mind, her God has answered her. Not knowing it was a mother who dropped the child there because she didn't want the child to die. God works in mysterious ways. Am I talking to somebody here? She took the child into her house, believing that her God has given her a child so that that child, Moses was being trained to become the next Pharaoh. They didn't know that they were training Moses to destroy them in 40 years time. What was happening? It was a foundation. A foundation came after a man called Moses. A man who was working with God. Foundation caught up with him. Foundation ruined his life. God said to somebody, a man called King Saul. He said, destroy Haggag. A man called Haggag. In 1 Samuel 15 verse 9, he says, and Saul spared Haggag. Saul did not destroy Haggag. Saul spared him. Many, Saul was from a tribe called the tribe of Kish. The tribe of Kish in 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 1. It was from a tribe called the tribe of Kish. Saul refused to, to kill Haggag. Samuel came and Samuel destroyed Haggag. Many years later, more than a hundred years later, there was a man. His name was Haman in Esther chapter 3 verse 1. That man became a vice president. And that man saw a man called Mordecai in Esther chapter 2 verse 5 from Kish. Don't forget, Haman was from Haggag. He was from that tribe God told Saul to destroy. But Saul spared. Mordecai was from Kish, from the tribe of Saul that spared Haggag. Many years later, Haman came after Mordecai. He said, I will destroy your seed. Haman didn't know what moved him to hate Mordecai. God told Saul, destroy Haggag. He refused. So many years later, the son of Haggag came after the son of Saul. It is a foundational element. You must understand that anything happening in your life today has a connection to patterns in your family. That is why your life appears to be shaken. Anytime you appear to want to break even, you want to break record, you want to stand out in the family, you see battles you don't understand. Yes, or the most outstanding person in your family, then you are going to attract battles. It is transgenerational what God wants you to do is to look into the eyes of the devil and say Satan you are stopping us in my family but my case is different I am a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people called for out of darkness to show his marvelous light I am a child of divinity he that is from above is above all as he is in heaven so are we in this world you don't serve dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. Lift your wind shot. Fire, fire, fire. Somebody say foundation. A past not properly handled is a pathway for future demonic operations. A past not properly handled. Do you know even the medical world believe in foundation? Doctors believe in foundation. Science believes in foundations. Oh yes. If you are diabetic, you go to the hospital. They are going to ask you, who in your family? Is that true? Is diabetic. What are they trying to trace? They're trying to trace if it's in the gene. If it's in the gene, the doctor already has an idea of prescription. Am I talking to somebody here? If it's in the gene, what you will prescribe to someone who is just getting it strangely, not with my mother, not with my father, they know how to trace it. But if it's in the gene, the prescription is different. If I it's in the gene, they don't stress themselves. They will teach you how to manage it because it's in the gene. They can't remove what is in the gene. 
they'll just teach you how to manage it because it's in the gene. But it's not in the gene. They're looking for how to cure it. Am I saying the truth? If medicine can understand the power of foundation, some of us say, I will not pray, I will not ignore it. You're ignoring it does not remove it. You're ignoring it complicates your life. You're ignoring it for that makes your life a mess and a mockery. A young man stopped submitting to us among the many thousands who submit to our ministry. He stopped submitting to us. Why? Because he said I was against alcohol. He was submitting to somebody who told them they can drink alcohol. It's okay. Now, when he came to me and he was talking to me, I discovered that his father was alcoholic. His uncle was alcoholic. And he said to me that he has been out, stopped taking alcohol for a while. I said, okay. But I don't think that you would um, just ignore it. Take out time. Pray against it. Handle it. Confront the powers that stopped your father. Because it's going to catch up with you. He said, okay. After a while, he stopped. And they asked him, we don't see you around on the sons of the prophets and all of that. He said, uh, the way Papa attacks alcohol. I was told he changed his communion and looked for a communion that had 6%. Uh, uh, no. So it was not him that was drunk now. The old church. 6%. So I said they should call him. That he doesn't have to submit to me for me to correct him. Let him come. From 6 to 12. And he was first shack it. Excessive shacking. Aggressive shackies. Are you following me? After taking that, then they can now serve to the brethren. Imagine a congregation that came to serve God. Shocking. A general. I'm just imagining that kind of church when everybody is a shakist. Imagine the usher carrying the offering bowl shockingly. Am I communicating now? Altar. 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 There are certain mistakes you made. It's not you that made them. It is what is fighting you that, that, that moved you to behave like that. Certain things that came out of your mouth before your helper. It just came out of your mouth. Later you say, is this me that said? It's like your eyes clear. What, what have I just said? What have I just done? No, it's not you. There was a power. There's something that said, where are you going? Where are you going? Where, how do you want to rise? You think you know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. It is a manipulation. Am I talking to somebody here? When people you just get suddenly, I was watching the Iraq, you see the prime minister or the governor, giving a speech on the podium. He was giving a speech. And somebody walked from somewhere walk to him caress lap <laughs> ha! I said no something's wrong I need, I need to know the story of that man that slapped him and I began to investigate the man's father would confront Iraqi government a man's family wouldn't see Iraqi government they long died it was small when they were doing that he was not there as he was growing up, spirits don't die. That is why it's called familiar spirit. It's a spirit that is familiar with your family. He knows how to manipulate. Something came on him all of a sudden. Power! Caress lap. What was fighting? It was altar. It was altars. I came today by the power of the Holy Ghost. The same thing that fought your sisters, your brothers, fought your father, your mother, and has come for you by this anointing, by the force of grace. Today, I terminate the operation. Amen. Amen. Take your seat. Number two. Number two source of limit is personal involvement. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 16 verse 5, he opened his mouth and cursed David. Personal involvement. There are things 
you have gotten yourself into that can become the limit, a restriction to your destiny. Personal. There is nothing you do in life that has no repercussion. Nothing. 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 The man began to cast stones on David. I'm talking to you today. How many people have you casted stones on? How many people are weeping because of you? How many people are crying because you are living? You're living that should make people happy and excited. People see you and they weep. How many people have you casted stones at? How many people have suffered bruises because of you? How many? This man was cursing David, stoning David, and quoting scriptures. Said to David, he said, God has taken the kingdom from you and give it to your son. He was sounding religious. Bring that portion up. He was sounding religious. God has given to him. He said, the Lord has returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord, listen to this. What was this man's anger? Keep that scripture up. He was from the family of Saul, where David took over from. He was not Saul's son. He was not Saul's grandson. He was just in that family line. But inherited the battle. Inherited the war of Saul. Why? Because he felt angry that Saul lost the throne. And they began to curse David. He began to throw stones at David and sound the religious. Have you not seen people that will fight believers and they will quote scriptures? You know, the Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 2, he said, We come to pass that even when they kill you, they will think they are doing God a service. When they take your life, they will think they are helping God. When they come after you, bring other translations up. When they come after you, bring up other translations of this portion. Bring up other translations of John 16 2. You will be expelled from the synagogue. Time will come when those who kill you will think that by doing this they are serving God. They, will, they are going to throw you out of the meeting places. There will come a time that when, any, when anyone who kills you will think he is doing God a favor. For you'll be as communicated from the synagogue. A time is coming when you'll be put to death. And by misguided ones who will presume to be doing God a great service by putting you to death. Are we seeing that about this generation? That people are fighting the church and they are quoting scriptures. You are fighting the... Let me say this to you. If, you. if you are against... And you discover that most people are fighting the church are Christians... If you want to fight Christianity, please leave Christianity. If you want to fight Christians, please just leave. Don't be a Christian. So that we tag you as an enemy. Don't stay amongst us and be fighting us. If you want to fight Christians, and you say Christians are a problem to us, are a problem to the nation, we agree. Please leave Christianity. Declare that you are no more a Christian so that we can face you as an enemy. You cannot be a Christian or claim to be a Christian. You are attacking Christians. Because you know Christians are trained not to fight back. You won't do that with the other religion. You won't do that. You won't even dare. No matter what you see wrong, you keep quiet. Because you know you open your mouth to say one word, they'll cut off your head. You won't do that. Quoting scriptures, they are sounding religious when they are attacking believers. Am I talking to somebody? Someone is in pain. This man ran because his son wanted his life. In the midst of his pain, you are. There are many of us who have taken advantage of people in pain. In pain. In pain. Lecturer. Taking advantage of youth in pain. It took their parents a lot to send them to school. Some of them, their parents sold their clothes to send them to school. Now they are in school. You are asking them for money to give them what they, they are entitled to. Taking advantage of people in their pain. 
and yet you have children that will go to school it is not one lecturer that will come for your child 15 because of what you have done taking advantage of people's pain pain taking advantage someone is, is someone is going through pain and they gave you their daughter and their son to take care of you gave them a name house girl maltreat them make them cry can i say this to you as a woman there is a way you will take care of a girl and she will not miss her parents if anyone living with you is still missing their parent it means you are not doing well there's a way you can handle a, a, a person and every day they'll be thanking God that they met you you are the boss of an office because people came there looking for help you are taking advantage and I don't know how people do that. I don't know how people go to bed when they take advantage of people. How? Everyone around me, we do not operate like boss and servant. We don't. I don't just give salary. I do beyond that. I carry load. If it's rent, I'm dead. If it's this, I'm dead. If it's that, I'm dead. It's father and son. Father and daughter, it's not um, boss and son. No. No. When it's in your power to do good, do it. Every good you do today is a seed for your tomorrow. You may not repeat, your children may repeat. Am I communicating right now? You may not repeat, your children may repeat. My children sometimes will tell me in their school, they say, well, daddy, when we say, this is our father. They say, where people look at us. There's a way they look at us. There's a, there's a way they look at us. Ah, your father? Are you sure? Are you sure? They smile. You see, they smile. I'm beginning to say some of the things that have happened. Am I communicating here? My pastors have gotten access into certain places. When they say, oh, I'm a pastor, Suleiman's pastor. Is it true? Come in, come in, come in. And they're saying, what happened? They start recounting. It was here the other day. All of us, from the beginning to the end, he made sure he gave all of us something from beginning to the end. This is why he did this, he did that. And I can't even remember. Scatter good everywhere. Scatter good. Scatter good. L leave that change with that bike man. Leave that change. 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 20 naira won't kill you. 40 naira won't kill you. You got home. He said, Your 15 naira say. Keep it. Eh? Keep it. Keep it. Let his group of friends be planning on who to kidnap and they point at you. He said, no. I know this one. Am I communicating here? Some years ago, I've told you the story before. In Benin, I was driving with just one security man. And let me explain this to you. People say pastors carry policemen. Pastors carry security. Why are they carrying security? If they don't, they should believe in God to protect them. You are very daft if you are talking like that. You are very myopic. Who, who can kill me? Who? Nobody can kill me. I know when I will leave this world. And I'm not close. I know the, I know the year I'm going to get to. God had told me. And I've not even gotten to half of it. So I'm not even bothered. When you are saying anything, I'm not bothered about that. Okay? But why do we do that? I was preaching in Ekboma, AU. I'm coming back to that story. And I was ministering, walking through the crowd. The young woman said her son or her daughter was mad. And when I was preaching, walking through the crowd, she put a hand on me, touched me as I was passing, and touched the child, and the child became normal. When she gave that testimony, I never knew I was in trouble. That day, I could not leave that hall. They beat me. I was going out. I receive. She, mother, you touch him. You're picking where? I touch. I touch. My head, my back, I was like this. Jesus, Jesus. Je I was on the ground. A crowd was on top of me. I couldn't breathe. When I opened my eyes, my mouth was swollen. My nose was swollen. They took healing, gave me sickness. They took healing and they gave me sickness. My head was swollen. 
I got back to the hotel room. I started pressing. I started pressing. Imagine man of God pressing to make heaven and pressing out. I was pressing. I was pressing. I said, God. The next day, I still came. They said, let's give you protocol. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. Nothing will happen. I got there. This time, they didn't carry me. They carried the car. Lifted up the Mercedes Benz and dropped it on the ground. Glass shattered. Me shattered. I said, what is this? So when you see us, say there are security, is to prevent mob. Yes. When they broke my hand, my wife just reminded me one. We went together. They broke my hand, my bone. They twisted it. <laughs> Pulling the hand in the name of I receive, I receive. So you see all that. It's not. No. We are not afraid. We are trying to control the mob. Why do you think Jesus was going about with 12 apostles? Jesus, son of God. Could anybody kill him? Could anybody kill Jesus? He had 12 men following him to control the mob. And one of them was carrying sword. Peter, we didn't know Peter was carrying sword until he cut off somebody's ear. And Jesus didn't say, throw away your sword. He said, keep your sword. There are still many more ears to cut. So I was driving. And I had him with me. We got to Benin. We were trying to navigate. And some young men came. Brrr, parked in front. Came down on the car. Boah, 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 shooting up. I was, ah, what, what, what? I was looking for camera. What film are they acting? My wife can tell you, nothing shocks me. Nothing. I don't see something. Else. Hey, no, no. I'll first of all look, what is going on? So I look. What, what movie? Say, come down, come down. I was looking. Me? Say, yes. Come down. Ah. That one is hard, though. I will come down on my own. You don't give me instructions. Before I knew the policeman that was by me was flat on the ground. was a young guy he's been transferred now <laughs> and no that kind of person should be transferred that's a tra that's a transferable character <laughs> and he laid down they said come on so i came down they said lie down i said lie down i said no i can't lie down boy boy you see what you're holding i said forget what you're holding why will i lie down and one of them came look at me apostle Suleiman said yes he said oh oh i was looking at him Oh no now no now no now no oh oh guy enter car enter car enter car enter car enter car so they said no you have to do the job this is his car now his car is the number he said no you don't understand don't understand enter car enter car enter car ah uh -uh. I was looking at them they go into the car trrr, right was he went down he said sorry sir sorry sir sorry sir sorry sir sorry sir sorry sir and left I went to my brother in Christ. I said, stand up. He said, no, 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 not be me, be your guy, not be me, be your guy, not be me, be your guy, not be me, be your guy. I said, it is me. Stand up. He said, okay, okay, are you? I said, yes, stand up, stand up. He stood up. He said, don't go. I said, yes. He carried his gun. He cocked. He said, where there? Where there? I said, my friend, shut up. Enter the car. But this is the testimony. The next day, I got a text message. I would like to speak with you, sir. It kept coming, kept coming, and I called the number. He said, I was the leader that led people to you yesterday. I hope you reach out safe. Hope they didn't come back. I said, no. He said, sir, first, he said all this in pigeon, but let me say it in English. He said, first, I want to apologize. It was your car. They gave us they described it and when we were coming out they told us everything please forgive me i said okay why do you want to kill me he said no not you your enemy your enemy no nobody can kill you i said why and he told me who sent him it was a pastor he said see 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 what this is it he said some years ago i was a student of law in uniben I was to write my exam. I got to the airport crying. I, I've gone to restaurants. I've gone everywhere asking people to help. Nobody helped. Some said I should go to the airport. I went to the airport. 
And I saw you. And I came to you that I'm a student. That I can't pay my school fees. And my exam is coming up. You only asked me for my ID card. And I showed you my ID card. He said, you gave me twice of my school fees and gave me your number. And said, any time I want to pay my school fees and my rent, I should text you. He said, sir, I will text you. You will send me the money. I graduated. But you know, Nigeria, no work. No work. So a group of friends of mine told me we can be doing whatever, whatever. And they sent me to kill you. Listen to me. The little good you do today. That somebody is a security man, a security guard today, doesn't mean he should be insulted and abused. Make him feel loved. I wish I was talking to somebody here. Make him feel special. A young lady walk in a cold room. You know cold room? Where they sell frozen fish and the rest. Massive one. And one day, she, she was trying to check some things. She entered into one of the cold rooms. That was a little bit freezing. And when she was trying to turn, the door locked in her face. She was good, going cold. One hour. Two hours. Nobody knew. And you know cold room is soundproof. She was trying to knock from inside. Nobody was hearing. She was dying. She was dying. She was dying. She was dying. It was getting the, to the close of work because it happened in the afternoon. She was dying. Gasping for breath. Dying. When people had left, the security man came and was looking around. Looked everywhere. And decided to open that cold room and saw her almost dying and brought her out. That was what saved her. Why was he looking around? He said, when they close from work, everybody walk past and treat him like he's not a human being. He said, well, that's the only girl that will come to the gate. I said, Daddy, how are you? Our family. How I work. Hope you're happy. Oh. Hope you're... He will give him hope. Make him laugh. He said, but that day at the close of work, he was waiting. He saw her coming to work. But he didn't see her coming to greet him. So he knew something was wrong. He knew something was wrong. When they closed, he had to be going around. See, this girl has not passed this gate. She has not greeted me today. She has not greeted me today. Looking around. Open! And found her at the point of death. Just that little good character. Imagine if she was an arrogant person. He will put, he will put her in the code room. I'm teaching you something. Let your life so shine before men. That day you see your good one. The man was insulting David. All the mighty men fed the pain. Mind what you do to people. All the mighty men felt it. What you do to one man affects several people. When you sack one person, there are people that feel the pain. One man, that is salary at the end of the month, satisfies a lot of people. One act. One act. I wish I was communicating here. Because these are the little things that stand as hindrance in the life of Christians who are doing 40 days fast. 50 days fast, 80 days fast, in the midst of a wicked heart. They finish fasting and praying, and nothing happens. They feel God has abandoned their body, the wickedness of their heart. There are people that don't fast like you. They don't pray like you, but they have a good heart. So that heart is what is speaking for them in the days of battle. I wish I was talking to somebody here. With the way you pray, the way you fast, you should not be where you are. But the wickedness, the, the, the way you treat people. The way you treat people. You say, Apostle, no, you don't understand. People always treat me bad. Don't let them change you. Keep being good. Keep being good. I do good to people, they treat me bad. Don't let them change you. They are who they are. Be who you are. They are bad. Remain being good. You are still going to meet people in your life that will treat you right. Everyone must hear this. There is a testimony that fasting does not bring. 
Prayer does not bring. Offering does not bring. Tithe does not bring. How you treat people is what brings it. There's a level of protection you enjoy that does not come by vigil. It comes by how you treat people. How you handle people. How you relate with people. Be upstanding, everybody. Be upstanding. Be upstanding. If you are in this church and you still treat people wrongly, I wonder who is your pastor. I wonder who is your pastor. A man had a wife that gave birth to a child, it was a girl. Gave birth to a second one, it was a girl. Gave birth to a third one, it was a girl. Four, five, six, seven girls. And you know, Africa is a country that is gender, it's, a, it's a, a continent, sorry, that is gender conscious. People believe that a boy is more than a girl. I don't understand. How? Say, because it is the boy, eh? Now we'll be carrying the name. If you don't die, you they remember your name. So you know, a man, you have to be a man. When you be man, you have to. I have five daughters, and I can tell you that the kind of care daughters give to their parents. My son is my son, he doesn't even know if I exist. Hello, daddy. He hugged me. Pam, he's gone. Pum. I say, come back. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Bye, bye bye. As far as he's concerned, you are my guy. <laughs> my daughters will look at my face. You are not happy. Why are you frowning? So I don't understand where that theory came from. Me, I'm seeing practical. You are telling me theory. So the man had seven daughters. So he drove the woman and the children. Seven. And that's what I don't know about Africa. If a woman offended you, what did the children do? It's a stupid mentality. You are not a man. You are not a man. You are on man. You are the man, on the man. That you are so angry with a woman, you are not taking care of the children. You are not, you are miss man. On man. Demand on the man. So he married another person after about 10, 15 years gap. That one had a girl, later had a boy, had another boy, had a girl, no problem. Many years later, the first daughter of this person he now remarried went to the embassy to get a visa. And when they got to the embassy, I don't know if you know, if you go for visas, there are people that will first cross-check your documents before you go and stand at the counter to meet the white people. Those people are Nigerians. They are the ones that will first cross-check, make sure your documents are complete before they can now tell you, go to... What is your problem? <laughs> Say yes, yes. How many embassies have you been to? <laughs> so, this guy went and stood in front of that place dropped her passport, dropped her document the person checking it looked at it saw the middle name, saw the last name where are you from? he did it now see him. is this name your father's name? say yes, say where is he? where is he from? say yes say sorry hold your document he called on the security man. He said, she's going to be here tomorrow. Tell her to come with her father. Ah, my father. He said, come with your father. Next day, back, 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 came with the old man. What the man did in his Bahurim days, in his youthful days, the man was coming. 
and he got there. He said, is this your child? Yes, it was my picky. I beg. He won't travel. I beg. Help me. He said, but do you remember a woman by so, 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 so name? No, no. A woman that had seven daughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first wife. Yeah, yeah, woman. And the girl said, I am the daughter. I'm one of those seven daughters. The other six are abroad. All of them live abroad. I'm working here. I'm your daughter. This person is supposed to be my sister. But daddy, so long I'm here, this girl will not travel. Bam! Security! Throw them out. Don't let them cross what he did. His own daughter bounced him. How do you treat people? Oh, I know, I know, I know. Ah, uh, that was not right, Papa. That was not right. I'm not a family member. I can't. Adv- I'm telling you the story. Uh-huh. I'm not a part of their family. I don't know how to. Adv- I don't know how to reach them. But I'm telling you, there are things you do. And there are many of you looking at me now. There are children you are not taken care of. You are in this place. You have a child somewhere. That you deny it. When I start praying, you will leave your seat and come to the altar. Let me lay hands on you and cry for mercy. A woman offended you, you abandoned her with the child. You will leave your seat, you will come here. Uh, it's serious. Let me pray for you. Somebody is pregnant for you, or was pregnant, you are denying. I don't understand. Somebody walked to you and say, I'm pregnant. You are what? I don't understand. She's what? What did you do? You are what? How can you say you are pregnant? No. Do you really mean you are pregnant? No. You are pregnant what? Are you saying that you are pregnant? No, she ate beans. It's beans she ate. Whatever you are, if you are in that category, I want to pray for you. What have you done to people? You have a child out of ignorance which you denied. And you are here, you are a man, you are a woman, whatever. When I'm praying now, leave your seat, come here. That may be the reason for your pain. Let me pray for you. Let me ask for the mercy of God for you. That's what the Lord is telling me now. Are you ready to pray? We're going to handle foundation and altars foundation and altar. If you're in that category, you will come forward. Foundations and altars. My own strength fail me. Friends and fa- come to the altar. Come to the altar. If you're in that category, come, come. Come to the altar. If you're in that category. My own strength fail me. Friends and families. You stood at me. You never let me down. My own strength fail me. Friends and families. You stood by me. My own strength fail me. My own strength fail me. Friends and families. Friends and families. Lord, your back. Back. Lord, you stood by me. Lord, you stood you by never me. let me down. You never let me down. My own strength fail me. My own strength fail me. Friends and families. Friends and families. Lord, your back. Lord, you stood me. Lord, you stood by me. You never let me down. My own strength failed me. My own strength failed me. Friends and families. Friends and families. Call your backs on me. You stood by me. Lord, you stood you by me. You never let me down. You never let me down. Oh.
1730 the Lord overlooked when you were ignorant and you were not aware you made mistakes anyone can make a mistake anyone Acts 1730 in the days of ignorance God winked at God overlooked so if you made a mistake you're on this altar it's not a big deal it's not a big deal anybody can make a mistake but your ability to correct it and trace your step retrace it and ask the God of heaven for mercy so before I pray for you right now you kneeling on the altar by the altar rather you will ask God for mercy Lord have mercy on me in any way these are taking hold or advantage of my life the enemy has used this as a pathway to afflict me to torment me show me mercy Ask him for mercy before I pray for you. Ask him for mercy. Oh, see. Pass me not a gentle savior. Hear my humble cry. Why on others? Thou art called all in. Do not pass me by. Say, Savior. Say, Savior. Savior, yeah. My humble cry. While on others Thou art calling My Savior Do Do not pass Me by My Savior people some sensitive spots who should be here I'm going to lay hands on everybody that's out there are people who are still in the crowd your position your pride will not make you come out it's an opportunity for a change you've been praying fasting but this is all you need is all there are people because you are positioned you are a worker you are, you are too arrogant to come forward leave your seat and join them it's a child that's crying out against you If I lay hands on them, they can go. Allah. 
God I do me come 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 please those of you on this side let them come Can you let them come? Come this way. Mercy. The mercy of God. Mercy. 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 Well, oh, sir. Well, oh, sir. Why alone ni adani Why is I ni atu go there Why ilolo ni mesa prayer for a country it's called Cameroon I want us to pray for the nation of Cameroon I avoided for many months praying for Cameroon because one time I gave a prophecy about Cameroon, about the leadership some people went to tell the leadership that I was praying against the president and I was hearing some things now if there's a country that this ministry has really shown love. It is Cameroon. Many Cameroonians have been living here. If you are Cameroonian, you have been here for over a year. Can I see your hand? Over a year. Wave your hand. Over a year. Over two years. Wave your hand. Over three years. Wave your hand. Over four years. Wave your hand. Has anybody harassed you? Has anyone harassed you? Has anyone harassed you? So when we hear, I was very angry when I heard I said, because I don't know why I love Cameroon. I don't know why. But the war going in Cameroon, the war going on in Cameroon, the media is not picking it. It's not in the news. Compared to the way people are being killed, it's not in the news. If it's Nigeria, there's one small bomb here. The whole internet will catch fire. But what is happening in Cameroon is not coming much in the news. Many parents can't send their children to school. Some people can't go to their hometown. If they are not killed by rebels, they'll be killed by the Amber Boys. The Anglophone crisis has been extended. We have to pray for Cameroon today. 
God told me to do, say pray for Cameroon in the service today. The thing you are seeing happening in Nigeria is because there is social media. But how many people in, the, in, the, in Cameroon really have media power that can spread what is happening? God put it in my heart yesterday. It's when you get to church, pray for Cameroon. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following me? Africa is one. Stop saying my country. I'm Ghanaian. I'm Sierra Leone. I'm Republic of Benin. I'm Niger. I'm Tanzania. I'm South Africa. No. Africa is one. What touches our sister country touches us. We're going to pray. Are you ready to pray? There are people that have been, their heads have been cut off. Some have been killed. Some have been wasted. For what they don't know. Are you listening? Are you listening? Ah, Apostle, why are we going to be praying for Cameroon? Why about Nigeria? We don't get our problem. Charity begin at home. I'm not charity. Go and begin at home. Go and begin at home. Since you are charity, go and begin at home. What you pray for God to do for your neighbor is what God does for you. See, wisdom. Even if you don't have a child, pray for somebody to have a child. Pray. I want us to pray this prayer then when I begin to prophesy. But we have to pray this prayer first. Some of you are waiting for a miracle session. Ah, Papa, he has not started prophesying. What is happening? Pray. Pray first. <laughs> are you ready to pray? Pray. We are going to pray that God intervene in the nation of Cameroon. The only way God can intervene in a nation that has a crisis like when they had a crisis in John chapter 10 is for the captain of the lost host to descend. When they were fighting God's people, the captain of the lost host descend. That God should spare Cameroon. God should release peace on Cameroon. Let's prophesy peace to Cameroon. From the presidency down to the last person. Peace. That let there be peace in that country. Just like what's happening in Nigeria. When a country has war, investors cannot come. And when investors don't come, it translates into poverty. Peace. Listen, if people are still running out of a country for a better life, it means that country has a problem. People are living in Nigeria. They are going abroad. They, they want to go anywhere, anywhere. It doesn't matter. Anywhere. It's a sign of failure. We will pray. Lord, intervene Cameroon. Peace. Use Cameroon to reach the whole Africa. Let there be peace. Open your mouth and pray for Cameroon. Let there be peace in Cameroon. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
Father, we pray for Cameroon as a nation. We pray for the nation of Cameroon. We pray for the Frank, we pray for the Francophones and the Anglophones. We are asking for peace. Father, peace. Let this killing stop. Let this war stop. We decree that the captain of the lost boats will descend upon that nation. Let the hand of God visit the whole Cameroon. <laughs> Father, we are asking a revival fire. Let those who have carried arms, who have carried guns, begin to encounter God in their dream. <laughs> Let them begin to drop their guns. <laughs> Mm. The Lord said you should note this down All Cameroonians note this down There are many Amber boys that will become evangelists They are going to encounter with Jesus And they will start exposing some things that you don't know God is telling me that many of them will lay their arms and serve Jesus I see many of them dropping their guns and carrying the Bible Peace In that nation I use Cameroon to reach all African nations in diaspora. And even Africans in diaspora, I pray peace in the nations and in the nationals. Peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my father. I want us to close. Are you ready for the anointing? I'm seeing a young chap. Are you a teenager or a youth? I'm seeing somebody. Your name is Praise God. Your name is Praise God. That's what they call you. Your name is Praise God. Is that your name? Praise God. Is it your name? Don't lie. Is it your name? Your what? Somebody called praise God. And the person has somebody in the family called Privé. Yes, sir. My dear sister, sir. What's your name? Praise God, Avra Covenant. What's your name? Praise God, Avra Covenant, sir. Who is Privé? My junior sister. Thank you, Lord. Who is promotion? My younger sister. Eh? My younger sister. Promotion. Yes, sir. Who is Prudence? My other sister, sir. Who is Precious? My, my other brother. Come here. Thank you, Maliata, brother Shaka. There's somebody, I see letter T. There's somebody in your family, I'm seeing letter T. Tosin. Who is Tosin? Tosin, my other brother, sir. Come, Father, come, Son. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and take your place in my This family Avurato 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 I, I, I saw a, a place Wait, wait Can I get a pen? Are you the mom? Woman, stand up, don't kneel Come, come If I don't pray for you, 
If I do not pray for you, if I don't pray for you, I saw them Lehisha. If I don't pray for you, I saw them take you to the hospital. And I saw them lying you down on operation bed. And I saw them cutting your breast off. The doctor wants to cut off your breast. Because they saw cancer in your breast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they said they want to cut your breast away. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Now, it has entered your system, your lungs. When you stay in places, even when others are saying it's cold, to you it's hot. You, can, you can't breathe well because it has entered your system. There is balm in Gilead. There is balm in Gilead. Do you believe Jesus can heal you? And God can take this away? Put your hand there. I want to pray for you. See. When you don't know what your problem is, you are struggling. Somebody say, open my eyes. Open my eyes. I want to see. My daughter sang a song yesterday for me. You said the Holy Ghost gave you a song yesterday. He says, sir. You said the Holy Ghost gave you a song yesterday. I'm trying to remember the song. We do Bible study together with my children. And I share the word of God with them. Sometimes I teach them. There was something about open eyes or something. Holy Ghost, I am tired of this blindness. Holy Ghost, come and open my eyes. Holy Ghost, let me see things internal. Holy Ghost, let me see you so bright. Holy Ghost, I am tired of this blindness. Holy Ghost, come and open my eyes. Holy Ghost, let me see things internal. Holy Ghost, let me see you so bright. Open eyes, shine so bright. Let me of love open eyes shine so bright Jesus let me see Christopher open open eyes shine so bright let me see Christopher open eyes Shine so bright, let me see crystal love. Wait, start again. Holy Ghost, I am tired of this blindness. Holy Ghost, come and open my eyes. Holy Ghost, let me see things internal. Holy Ghost, let me see you so wait, bright. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not telling her to sing because she's, my daughter, because she's my daughter. When something comes from the Holy Ghost, I know. There are people that have stood on this stage from the choir. As they drop a song, I say this from the womb. There are people that compose song. There are people God gives song. So it's not because she's my daughter. I told my children, I said, don't be called apostle's child. Be called a minister of the gospel. So walk with God on your own. 
not because I'm your father. Because you are, you are not always going to be with me. My first daughter now is in school. It's what she learned that she's showing the world. The first thing you said, Holy Ghost, I'm tired of this blindness. Come and open my eyes. Let me see crystal clear. Take it one more time. Holy Ghost, I am tired of this blindness. Holy Ghost, come and open my eyes. Holy Ghost, let me see things in turn up. Holy Ghost, let me see you so bright. Holy Ghost, I am tired of this blindness. Holy Ghost, come and open my eyes. Holy Ghost, let me see things in turn. Holy Ghost, let me see you so bright. Open eyes. Open eyes, shine so bright. Let me see crystal clear. Somebody say, Father, open my eyes. And those of you who are into ministry, gift as artists, the songs the Holy Ghost will give you will be more than the songs you will compose. Amen. That you begin to walk with God and hear from God and ultimately bring a revival to your world. Amen. You will not waste the Holy Ghost will begin to inspire you. Open eyes, shine so bright. Let me see crystal clear. Open eyes, shine so bright. Let me see crystal clear. Open eyes, shine so bright. Let me see crystal. Open eyes, open eyes, shine so bright. Let me see crystal. Open eyes. Open eyes, open eyes, shine so bright. Let me see two more times. Open eyes, open eyes, shine so bright. Jesus, let me see Christ. Open eyes. Your mother has an attack. But let me tell you this. Sit down, everybody. Listen. Normally, I walk through the crowd, right? I'm instructed to stay here. I don't know why. I'm instructed to stay here. I'm not instructed to come in. So I have to obey the instructions of the one that called me. He said, don't move in. Stay here. I don't know why. I have to obey him. Now, if your mother goes to the doctor for them to operate her breast, she will die. Because her problem 
is not medical. You believe it is cancer. Cancer formed. The day you don't believe it is cancer, cancer goes. Somebody threw a stone at you. Somebody threw something at you in the dream. And you felt it when you wake up, you felt sharp pain. Huh? Yes, sharp pain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now, you'll be going for prayers. Sometimes it will appear like you are getting okay. Yes, sir. It will come back. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And there's someone who said that there's a herbalist. There's a herbalist. Yes. That if you go to that herbalist, yes. they will handle this problem. Yes, sir. That person yes, sir. is the person yes, sir. that gave you this problem. See, open my eyes. Woman. Eh? They drive you. Shh. I no talk. Oh. I no talk. Oh. I say the person. The person. Now you talk. I no talk. Father. Ah, oh, yala bahada shada hadi. Proverbs twenty six twenty seven, Psalm seven fifteen, Ecclesiastes ten eight. He that did get a pit. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Anything they threw at you, they fired at you, they sent to you. Right now, we package it back to where it came from. Anything they threw at you that is presently affecting your health, affecting your heart, affecting the anointing of God on your life, affecting the assignment of God for you, today we package it, we send it back. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare your freedom, woman. Free, 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 free. Free, she's free. She's free, free. Who is success? One neri. One neri. Success, one neri. Open eyes. Shine so bright. Let me see. Yellow, yellow, yellow cloth. Open eyes. Shine so bright. Let me see. Crystal Open eyes. Shine so bright. Let me see. Open Are you here alone? Are you here alone? I came with my friend. Where is your friend? Come. When I looked at you there, I saw a handcuff in your hand. I saw a handcuff. You know handcuff? I saw that if I don't pray for you, they are going to rope you into something. I may get you arrested. But as I pray for you now, it's cancelled. Kneel down. What is revealed is redeemed. You will not be a victim of a stray bullet. I'm speaking.
you will not be a victim of a stray bullet. You will not be a victim of a stray bullet. In 1 Timothy 5, it says, Lay hands on no man suddenly, neither become partakers of another man's sin. I decree that you will not fall a victim. Father, let him return with a testimony of preservation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mercy. Someone is pregnant. Your name is Susan. You are pregnant. Susan. Narekele Naro Tito Sansa Are you not Mama? Lord, you read forever. You are the same. I Mama. Mama, you lift up. Home. Yes, sir. Polygamous home. Yes, sir. Let me pray with you. You are from Polygamous home. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three children. Why did you breathe like that? Oh, you think I'm guessing? Oh, oh. Oh, you think I'm guessing? Who is Aluchi? My mom. Huh? My mom. Your mom. Glory. That's our English name. Our native name is Aluchi. Our Christian name is Glory. Yes. You think I'm guessing? Now you are crying. Just now you were. You are a very young child. But you have been taking care of yourself. You have made mistakes. Taking care of yourself. Look at me. If you come out like this, huh? you go this way. You go down. This is a building. Huh? Yes, this is a building. Yes, sir. Electrical. Yes, sir. Something like power. Yes, sir. I enter the building. I see a restaurant. Yes, 
sir. That's what you're working. That's what you're working. Oh, you think I'm guessing? I should go further. What about school? She's crying. What about school? I dropped out from my third year. Can I pray with you? Huh? Abia State. Abia State University. Yes, sir. You were a student there. Yes, sir. You dropped out. What level? Three hundred. Three hundred. Your first semester. When was that? Last two years. Last two years. Because there was no money. You will go back to school. <laughs> Dr. Sigma may come. You are an academician. He is a university lecturer. What we can do, whatever we can do. The finance I'll take care of, but the, the whatever. Yes, getting back the studentship, where will she start from? I don't think she deferred it. Maybe she just dropped out. If she deferred, it's quite understandable. Maybe if she just opted out, self withdrawal. I don't think they will allow continue if it was self withdrawal, but we can work around it. If you write a letter of appeal, right? If you write a letter of appeal, you go back to school. Stop working. How much are they paying you? Eight thousand. Eh? Eight thousand. How much? Eight thousand. Eighty thousand. Eighty. Eight thousand. What is eight thousand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Every every day. They gave you what? I just gave my tithe today. Wait. Every day they pay you that money? Monthly. A month. Uh. So you have collected for this month? Have you collected for the last month's salary? No, I've not collected. Last month old. I collected yesterday. Last month old. You collected yesterday. All right, see him at the end of the service. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. You are going back to school. You are not, look at me. You are not working there again. You go back. I'm not against the place. I don't know where the place is. I'm not against the people at the place. Okay, before they say I took one of their workers. I'm not against them. Maybe that payment is what they can afford. So you cannot really be critical of them. That's what they have. I hope that's what they have. I hope that's what they have. But let her go back to school. Youthfulness is what you cannot get back. Youthfulness is usefulness. Kneel down. We'll be able to pray and help you. May she break pattern in her family. In Jesus' name. There's somebody, I'm wasting your time. There's somebody, your name is Chika. Your wife's name is Ifoma. Come out. Your name is Chika. Your wife's name is Ifoma. Come out. Quase qua una cala tina sofa na na. 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 Oh, tina sofa na na. Tina so fanana, 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 
Especially this week, the devil will not make news in your life. <laughs> Whatever deposit of hell in your body, in your life, on your path, by the speaking blood of Jesus, such is lifted off your way. This week the Bible says the path of the just is like a shining light that shineth more and more into a perfect day. This is your week of brightness. Amen. Your week of illumination. Amen. It shall be your season for announcement. Amen. Advancement. Amen. Increase. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you are sick in your body, be healed. Amen. If you are bound, be loose. Amen. You are afflicted, be free. Amen. Everyone with financial battles, this is your week of testimonies. Amen. Any attack you are going through in your dreams, it ends today. <laughs> this day I decree the end of the power and manifestation of witchcraft in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands. Hear this. I'm on this camera. For the past couple of months, two months now, we have not had Jehovah the doctor. It's deliberate. Because we are doing the Jehovah the doctor in amazing grace. On the 1st of December, 2nd December, 3rd December, anybody you know, anyone in the world, who has a doctor's report hanging over their head, bring them here. I am challenging that doctor's report. Bring them. Let them fly down from wherever, wherever they are. We're starting the morning on Wednesday. Mo morning, Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, Thursday evening, Friday morning. Then Friday evening is the JMF. Now, we are challenging them. You can't stand before grace and survive. 
You can't be called sickness and survive grace. Bring them to amazing grace. I'm believing God that we will see miracles in our lives. Clap your hands. Where is your wife? Where is your wife? Stand up. Remain standing. Let us pray. Your finances are down. People are supposed to call you for job. But no one is calling you. Dry bones rise again. Pick him up. Look at me. My name is Johnson Suleiman. I'm telling you that this week we are entering. They will call you. They will call you and they will favor you. They will bless you. They will bless you. They will bless you. Woman, safe. Bad news canceled. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Satan will not use me. Satan will not use me. As experiments. As experiments. Satan will not use me. Satan will not use me. As a testing ground. As a testing ground. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. My life. My life. Will be used by God. Will be used by God. As a testimony. As a testimony. Used by God. Used by God. As an example. As an example. As evidence. As Evidence. Used by God, used by God, as a mirror, as a mirror to my world. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Tuesday we have a great Bible study that you are not going to miss. Remain standing as we close. Tuesday, great Bible study that you are not going to miss. Wherever you are. You want me to pray for you as we are all standing. Anytime you want to serve God, you fall. You, you've tried several times. You see yourself down. You try, you're down. You try, you're down. We are all standing now. And you want to say, Apostle, pray for me. I want to serve this God. This time around, I believe I'm going to stand. I want to stand. If you're in that category, I'm waiting for you. Come here. Come and meet me. Come. Give them a slip. Give them a form. Come. Remain standing, we are closing now. My desire is to see the nations worship every tribe standing in awe of you. Nations rise, sing hallelujah. I want my life. To be your channel to my world, to my world. Let people see the you in me, not just me. Let people hear the you in me, not just me. Let people learn to seek your ways. As you live your life through me, let people see the you in me, not just me. Let 